Well, thanks very much, Phil. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation on Tonsley. Uh, and as you've probably heard, I'm Terry Burgess, the chair of the Tonsley Steering Committee. Uh, I'd like to thank Risa for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today and also test this technology on making the presentation remotely. Um, however, in the core library, uh, there shouldn't be any problems as technology is a very important part of this library, as many as you would have seen or will see with the 3D visual presentations. The library is also currently home to some advanced technology in the form of the Minimalizer and Highlogger. It's certainly much easier to talk to Tonsley to people who have actually been there. And since you're already there, you know how close uh, this is to the city. Um, 20 minutes door to door by electric train and you'll be pleased to hear this morning my app says that the next train to the city is on time, in fact leaving in a minute's time. Um, many of you might have already seen some of the developments first hand at Tonsley. So starting off, it's worth considering the history of Tonsley. Uh, the Ghana people lived in this area of the Adelaide Plains between the hills and the coast. And these plains became farming countries in the 1880s, first with grains and then fruit, vegetable and nuts, and particularly with almonds. And the property was named Tonsley by Richard Ragless. In 1956, the rural setting was changed with Chrysler moving to site, progressing from the spares and accessories division to Tonsley becoming the largest car assembly plant under one roof in Australia. In 1980, Mitsubishi took over the company, but changes in the, company, uh, in the car industry's fortunes and consumer buying habits affected uh, Mitsubishi in the 2000s, and manufacturing ceased in March 2008. And South African, uh, sorry, the South Australian government made a bold decision and in December 2009 purchased the derelict site and developed a master plan for an innovation precinct. And this plan was endorsed by Cabinet in February 2012 and now defines Tonsley. So this first slide sums up the overall Tonsley vision that was key to this master plan. Tonsley embodies the triple helix model with business, academia and government, both state and local. And the close working relationship and the collaboration between these groups is a vital ingredient for Tonsley. And I'll talk about this in more detail later in this short presentation. This next slide here shows you what many people would think of when they hear about Tonsley. It was a very important motor manufacturing and assembly plant for over 50 years. And as I just mentioned, Mitsubishi closed the Tonsley Park in 2008. And at that time, the future of Tonsley hung in the balance. It could have been repurposed for another use, which would be relatively low value, such as a major bus depot or maintenance facility, or a big retailer warehouse. Something which would not speak to the transformation of the South Australian economy. Alternatively, it could become a beacon of what the future might look like. Unfortunately for South Australia, the government had the vision at that time to choose the latter option. This next slide shows Tonsley today. In January 2014, the TAFE at Tonsley opened its doors for its first apprentices and the re-roofing of the main assembly building, the MAP, was completed in the middle of that year. In 2015, the Flinders at Tonsley building opened in February and the Siemens workshop was equipped and operating in the first part of that year. And only this year, in 2016, <laughs> where you are today, the State, the state Drill Core Library was officially open and now stores almost all of the state's historical drill core, with some of the core dating back to the late 1800s. The main assembly building, or as we call it now, the MAP, is the central core of the precinct. It's a place to meet, interact and collaborate, joining the various parties present at Tonsley together. And the map is progressively being populated with the latest tenants MicroX and Hydrix having moved into their new buildings early last month. Tonsley is unique. It's the only innovation precinct in the world which has been driven by government rather than an academic institution, business or foundation. And it's also one of the very few innovation precincts in the world outside of North America and Europe and therefore should be seen as an icon for Australia. And what has already been done at Tonsley is a credit to the people who have been involved with this project since 2012. I thought I would quickly show on this slide 
some of the Institute of Architecture Awards, which Tonsley received earlier this year as part of the South Australian Awards. And announced last week, Tonsley has now been nominated for four national awards, the results of which will be announced in early November. I've got a series of slides coming up now. This first one is an aerial view of the site, and the red dotted outline shows the 61 hectare precinct with the map from the Chrysler era being the large central building, itself covering about eight hectares. The next slide shows this building has now been transformed as the core area of Tonsley, which is now bookended by the Flinders University and Tate buildings. And this is a good idea to give you some uh, detail on this slide, on the allocation of areas at Tonsley. The eight hectare area underneath cover in the main assembly building, the MAP, will house tenants which will lease accommodation designed for their own purposes. And the remaining areas outside the MAP, which is this, the, uh, uh, the 57 hectares, will be sold to different businesses as freehold land. This next slide shows some of the 50 businesses which are already located at Tonsley. And these businesses fit within the four, co four key focus sectors for Tonsley, which I will describe shortly. And added in here, as you can see, are some of the businesses that have moved to Tonsley, like Innovid, Zen Energy, MicroX, and Hex, or are moving in shortly, like Sage Automation, <laughs> which is going to be in place uh, by mid-2017, and Radical Talk. And the building for Radical Talk is planned uh, for the freehold land just, just outside the core library and should start construction by the end of this year. The Tonsley Innovation Precinct's already seen total investment of just under $500 million and is planned to attract more than 6,000 jobs, 8,500 students per year and 1,200 residents with a residential development to be commenced shortly. And this slide, looking forward, uh, shows some of the things that are going to change in, in the next uh, couple of years. On the left-hand side of this slide is the existing electric rail line, which is going to be extended to Bedford Park through an $85 million federal and state project, thus linking the Flinders University main campus, Flinders Medical Centre, and the Flinders Private Hospital with Tonsley, and also with the city, the Sanru, and the city-based hospitals. And the extended train line will also offer opportunities for further development around the station. Some accommodation, and student housing, will go along the line between Tomsley and Bedford Park. Along the rail line to the northwest of the precinct is the site of a new residential development, which will see 850 dwellings, two to three level townhouses, and four plus level apartments with 1,200 residents in total. The developer is CIC and has been appointed and if you do go to the top of the Flinders building and you look to the northeast, you'll see some of the pre-works that are now well underway with the major works commencing in 2017. This development will assist in further transforming Tonsley into a public place with the assistance of the city of Marion and the neighbouring city of Mitcham. And this becomes a marked difference from the forbidding industrial site which has been in the community for over 50 years. This next slide, lastly on this slide, on the right-hand side to the east, is the development of the North-South Corridor, which will provide additional interconnectivity for Tomsley, with the alignment of the new road giving improved and level road footpath cycleways between Bedford Park area and Tomsley. Turning to the slide here, this represents the Tomsley development model. The combination of the firms, institutions and organisations with the physical assets, particularly the public open spaces, such as you can see in the map, and the relationship between all the occupants. This is the model in the Brookings Report, The Rise of Innovation Districts, A New Geography of Innovation in America, which was published in 2014. <laughs> and the following slide shows the four target innovation business sectors for Tonsley. Health, medical devices and assistive technologies, clean technologies, software and simulation, and mining and resources. And businesses moving to Tonsley need to be active in one of these innovation business sectors. This slide here shows the companies that are already at Tonsley, but doesn't include the businesses that are working in the New Ventures Institute, which is part of Flinders University, 
or that's been attracted by the cohab. There's about 50 in total. Also not included are a lot of companies that are currently close to finalizing arrangements to move to Tonsley uh, in the map and also in the freehold areas. Uh, and this is particularly been accommodated with the additional investment that's been made by the state government for further tenancies within the map. I'll turn to this slide. It's a complicated slide, but the detail's not important. And I touched upon the key benefits of co-location of different players and this innovation network, which has been used for a specific application at Tomsley, demonstrates the interconnectivity and interaction that is already being seen. As I mentioned, this uh, detail isn't important, but you can see business, university, and government entities working together in various combinations. And I'll turn to a quote on a slide uh, here that's taken from the Brookings Report. And last year, Brookings undertook a review of progress of innovation districts in various cities in the US and Europe, which emphasized the important differences between innovation districts and traditional science and technology parks. And I'd like to spend a little bit of time to focus on this because it helps explain why Tonsley is different. Science and technology parks tend to offer spatially isolated buildings with little or no integration of work and housing and recreation. And I visited a technical innovation park in another state a couple of months ago. And the layout of the site almost guarantees that employees in each building would never meet their neighbors. People drove from home to the car park under the building, went up in the lifts in the morning, and then did the reverse in the evening. And according to the developer of the park, the entry criteria was that businesses had to be in technology or innovation. And that really covered almost any business today, so the door was open for everybody. But of course, the most important thing the developer said, the business must be able to pay the rent. Innovation precincts like Tomsley facilitate companies working with other businesses, inventors and researchers to generate new ideas and bring them to market in an environment which offers choices in housing, transportation and amenities and also incorporates the local community. And the review that was carried out by Brookings in 2015 confirmed the importance of focusing on creating place to increase overall vitality, facilitate innovation and spur the growth of new businesses and jobs. And the review concluded, quite bluntly in my opinion, that if a city or suburb simply labels something as innovative, it doesn't make it that. A critical mass of economic, physical and networking assets are required to generate the vitality needed to make an innovation district successful and also ensure that the focus sectors deliver competitive advantages. And all these ingredients are here at Tonsley. So this is my last slide and it's been a quick introduction to Tonsley. I haven't told you about the six star green star communities raising the ideas which some of you might have heard from Siemens about hydrogen energy storage, or the plans for an aging well living laboratory at Tonsley, and the microgrid uh, with solar array that's being worked on. And if you go to the, again to the top of the uh, Flinders University building, you'll see the roof of the map and the areas where the solar array are going to fit. There's some really great ideas coming from for Tonsley that will probably come out of the New Ventures Institute pipeline or from Innovit. And there's a very important development that I'm looking forward to, and, and that's the development of the microbrewery restaurant complex. When I first visited Tonsley, I was told I could go anywhere I wanted, wherever a door is open. And I can stand, extend that invitation to anyone here today after this event. And when you go into the various areas, you'll be surprised by how many doors are opened or can be opened. Tomsley is not only open for business, it's open to your business. So please take advantage of the tour which Jet Gun will lead after today's event. And if you want to stay longer, don't forget you can go wherever a door is open. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for the opportunity to give you this introduction to Tomsley. And I hope as many of you as possible uh, take advantage of the tour. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, if you're okay while you're on the phone, I might ask if there are questions from the audience for you. Yeah, sure. And uh, I'll be able to translate those if, they, if there are. So, um, having heard the presentation, are there questions about the future of Tonsley that uh, Terry might help you answer? 
Yes, I do have one. Yes. The plans for linking the Giga City. I beg your pardon, John. Plans for linking the Giga City. Right. So Terry, it's uh, from John Ellis Flint, and the question is plans for linking to Giga City. Okay. Well, um, as many of you know, Giga uh, uh, City is being rolled out progressively, and there's a number of different nodes and. Um, Tonsley is part of the phase one of the Geek City rollout, and that uh, rollout will be completed by June uh, 2017, so June next year. And the, the, the difference uh, for businesses uh, working um, at uh, Tonsley or any of the other nodes like Mawson's Lake or Techport um, is that uh, originally, I mean, this is really part of SaberNet. SaberNet was put together for the three universities and the government and then it got extended to other educational institutions and then it was extended a little bit to businesses that are working closely with universities on research. What's happening now is it's being extended in these nodes to businesses that are truly involved in uh, innovation and development of ideas. So there are a lot of uh, companies at uh, Tonsley and other sites uh, which will be, will be able to access uh, what's going to be more than the one gigabyte per second uh, big city link um, and therefore um, actually start to, to use that high speed connectivity. And one of the questions that I put out to uh, all the people who are occupiers at Tonsley is if you have the world's fastest internet connection, what would you do with it? And we've got a meeting in a couple of weeks' time where people are going to present their ideas on how it, uh, it can be used. And I think yesterday it was announced, um, and you, you may have seen the one-page advert in the Adelaide Advertiser, um, that there's now a connectivity uh, with uh, a number of different hubs in the US. Uh, and uh, this is the first time uh, that uh, any... any uh, city outside of the US has been connected uh, and Adelaide is the first. So um, it really starts to show um, with, with the rollout of Big City uh, here in Adelaide that we can uh, really make a difference um, and be connected uh, to uh, the major areas in, in places like the US. So I think this is a really exciting development and uh, one of the things that I want to make sure is that businesses understand uh, what is on offer and what can be done um, and that's the reason that we're holding this workshop going, uh, in a couple of weeks time at Tonsley. Thanks very much Terry. Are there other questions that Terry could answer? Thank you very much Terry. No, uh, no other questions so I'll hang up now. Thank you very okay, much. Okay Bill, thanks very much and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.